BBC News with Fiona MacDonald. President Putin has signed a decree recognizing the independence of two breakaway regions of Ukraine, controlled by Russian-backed separatists. The decree also says Russian armed forces will perform what it calls peacekeeping functions in the two Ukrainian territories. Here's Caroline Davis. After months of diplomacy, this was not the result the West wanted. President Putin's decision to recognize the independence of the separatist areas of Ukraine breaks the Minsk ceasefire agreements, could lead to sanctions, and will spark further tensions in Ukraine. In a long TV address, President Putin said that the collapse of the Soviet Union had robbed Russia, called eastern Ukraine ancient Russian lands, and said that it was managed by foreign powers. It's likely that Russia will send military support to both regions, which have fought against the Ukrainian government forces for years. There's been widespread international condemnation of Mr Putin's announcement. The United Nations Secretary General described it as a blatant violation of international law. The UN Security Council is to meet shortly to discuss Ukraine following a request by the US, Britain and France. Here's our North America correspondent, Peter Bowes. President Biden has moved swiftly to sign an executive order imposing financial sanctions against the rebel territories freshly recognized by Russia in eastern Ukraine. It prohibits new investment, trade and financing by Americans in the breakaway regions of Donetsk and Lugansk. The order says sanctions will be imposed on any person determined to operate in those areas of Ukraine. The White House said such measures were separate to wider Western sanctions ready to go should Russia further invade Ukraine. Earlier, Mr Biden held a 35-minute call with the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky. He also spoke with the leaders of France and Germany. Colombia's highest court has voted to decriminalize abortion in the first 24 weeks of pregnancy. It follows Mexico and Argentina in expanding abortion rights in the past year, as our South America correspondent Katie Watson now reports. This is a huge step for widely Catholic Colombia, but an even bigger development for this deeply conservative region, yet another country giving women more access to abortion. Until now, terminations were only allowed in the case of rape if the woman's life was in danger or if the fetus had serious health problems. But activists campaigned long and hard to totally remove abortion in the first 24 weeks of pregnancy from Colombia's penal code. Jordan's royal palace has described leaks about hundreds of millions of dollars held by King Abdullah in Swiss bank accounts as inaccurate, old and misleading. The leaked data, which contained details of thousands of accounts at the bank Credit Suisse, suggested that the King of Jordan had at least six accounts, with one worth more than $250 million. World News from the BBC. Saudi Arabia says it has foiled a drone attack targeting an airport in the southern city of Jizan. Shrapnel from the destroyed zone, said to have been launched by Houthi rebels in Yemen, injured four people. It came down in a village about 60 kilometres from Jizan. The British government has announced that England's remaining Covid laws will be abandoned. The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, told Parliament it was time to rely on vaccinations and treatments to control the pandemic, rather than government intervention. He said people would no longer be legally required to isolate after a positive test, instead urging them to exercise personal responsibility. The leader of the main opposition Labour Party, Keir Starmer, said Mr Johnson's proposals would bring chaos and disarray. Members of the military-dominated parliament in Mali have voted unanimously to allow the military to rule the country for up to five more years. David Bamford reports. Following the military coup in Mali 18 months ago, the army had initially promised to hold elections early this year, but in December they were cancelled. That has already triggered a trade embargo by the West African regional group ECOWAS, and last week, France announced it was withdrawing its troops deployed in the country to fight jihadist groups. The bill calls for continued army rule for up to five years. The Chilean government is returning one of the huge stone statues it removed from Easter Island more than 150 years ago. Members of the Rapa Nui indigenous community held a traditional ceremony outside the National History Museum in Santiago to mark the departure of the monolith, depicting a human figure which weighs 700 kilos. Known as Moai Tau, it will be taken by ship on a five-day journey to the remote Pacific Island, which belongs to Chile. For years, the Rapa Nui have demanded the return of all statues to the island. BBC News.